Yes. Okay, cool. JC, welcome to uh, your interview today. My name is Daniel. I'll be your interviewer. Um, <clears throat> the question you'll be given today will take about 30 minutes to solve. Um, at the end, you can ask me questions. Uh, does that sound good? Sounds great. Awesome. Okay. So the prompt is, you're given an integer array, coins, representing coins of different denominations, and an integer, integer amount representing a total amount of money. So you're given an, uh, an, uh, an array of coins and an integer. What I'm looking for is for you to return the fewest number of coins that you need to make up that amount. If that amount is cannot be made up of by the coins that are given, return a negative one. I see. Okay, so just to confirm, we're gonna be given some uh, like array, which is kind of like a list or a set of coin values, like one, five, 10, for example. Mm -hmm. And then we have a target amount, like let's say I'm trying to make 15, then the goal is to, uh, could you repeat what the, uh, the return value is again? Return the fewest number of coins that you need to make up that amount. Right, fewest number of coins. So that would be like a five and a 10. So the total would be two. That's my answer. Is that right? Sounds right. <clears throat> okay. Um, all right. So can I assume that the coins will be given in a sorted order and by value? No. No. Okay. All right. Uh, so let's see. Okay, so I'm I'm already thinking that I'd like to sort the you know coins. Um, that'll help me approach the coins by the uh, largest value heading down. Um, the reason I'd like to start by attacking the, by using the largest coins is um, that would minimize the number of coins to use. I'm trying to you know make sure that that statement is true. So I need to give it a second, um, but so like given, like, is it ever possible to use less coins by using a set of smaller coins than the larger coins? Um, so for example, if, let's see, if we use the large, my arm is super screwed up, isn't it? Yeah, it's okay. Don't worry about <laughs> it, everybody. <laughs> it's because I put the other controller down. Yeah, this will probably be better now, hopefully. So if uh, if we were to use like uh, trying to, you know, I'm trying to come up with the edge cases here. Um, if it was like 22, and we were using. There was coins that were like, like how would I, I need to like split this 22 into something that makes sense. Um, okay, so yeah, even for this example, hmm. yeah, barring some like edge case example here, my like immediate uh, approach would be to start from the largest coins, um, subtract out uh, as many of those coins as I can until there's a remainder that I can't uh, take out using this coin, and then I'd move on to the next coin and go down the line like that. That's like the kind of first approach that I would take. But this isn't. This is like a purely greedy approach, and I can't right now. I, I'm not 100% certain about the, the, if that greedy principle holds here. So the other safest approach is to take a uh, like a computational, uh, yeah, like a fully combinatoric approach um, to try every possibility in a somewhat efficient way using like dynamic programming for caching. Um, and in that sense, basically at every uh, step we could choose to either take a take this coin or move on and start taking from the next coin so there's basically like a sequence of decisions of continuing to take from this type of coin or moving to the next coin 
And then we would essentially be building this kind of like decision tree that kind of branches out. I think it would be of degree uh, two. Yeah, essentially, you know, you, you keep exploiting the current coin mm -hmm. or you move on to the next coin. And so, um, yeah, and then you would basically, you could implement this recursively and then just cache, um, cache the sub problems. I still need to define what the input to the sub problem would be, but, you know, once you have that, you can cache it and then your complexity would be the, basically the set of sub problems. Um, that you can encounter. So theoretically, with this approach, what would your runtime be without caching? Uh, without caching, uh, so it's two. It'd be like the base would be two because every step you have two choices, um, and then Is that so? the so the starting point would be starting at like the largest coin, and then you've a decision of taking a coin, uh, like using this coin and subtracting it from the amount or moving on to the next uh, type of coin. And then the number of decisions, uh, it's possible to exploit this coin multiple times as seen here. And this, the depth of this branch is dependent on the size of the amount. So um, I'd say the worst case would be like, let's say we have a coin of one, mm -hmm. um, then it would be like um, in order, complexity order of amount going down here. Um, and then this would also be like amount. And then this would also be like amount, you could say. So it would be like, I think it'd be poly, actually, yeah, I think, it, is that polynomial? Um, yeah, but like this dimension here is like an order of amount. And then this dimension here is like coins, the number of coins. I think I lost you a little bit on your graph. Um, oh, yeah, it's, all right. it's a bit messy. Um, that's okay. Um, you can also move to the, the left or the right, so you can keep the whiteboard space if you choose. Can I like um, move the whiteboard? Like, You can move spaces, so you would actually shift over to the right or the left by looking at the, fo the footprint. Oh, yeah, I see that. Okay. There. So I'm thinking of it in like two dimensions. The first mm -hmm. dimension here is like the coins. Mm -hmm. And you'd start from the, you know, largest going down. And then the other dimension here is the amount. And, um, you know, if you were to exhaustively, yeah, if you were to basically try every possible combination oh yeah so at each step so if you if you're going in the the down the down direction then you're um taking coins you're like ex you're, you're like exploiting the current coin um towards the target amount and then at each point along this line, you could potentially move over to the next coin. And yeah, and you could have done it at the start. And then similarly, uh, you could keep going down or move on to the next. So yeah, you're basically exploring all of these possible states, I guess, the state of like, um, how much of the amount is left and the current coin that you're on, right? So it's like a coordinate between coin and amount. <clears throat> so some of what you're saying makes sense. Um, what, yeah. what your, your conclusions make sense. I'm having a little trouble following the diagrams, um, but that's okay. I think we can, I think you have a good grasp on what this is. Um, how would you define, you know, you mentioned sub problems, what would a sub problem look like? So a sub problem would, uh, sorry, go on. I interrupted you there. Yeah. And I would love to see you run through like the first iteration of that sub problem, what that would look like. Yeah. So I would define a sub problem with these parameters. The first one being your coin index, which is the current coin that you're on 
in the list of coins, sorted coins. So this would start at zero and move, you know, to let's call it N. Mm -hmm. And then the second argument would be amount remaining. Sorry, now I'm sacrificing uh, legibility. It's okay. Yeah, so that says amount remaining. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this would start from, uh, I'm going to use, can I use K as the starting amount? Sure. So it would go from K down to zero. What, I think what I'm missing is why do you have to pass on the coin index? Hmm. Let's see. That's true. Um, it's possible that like the answer for two sub problems with the same amount remaining, but different coin indexes still return the same answer. In which case, you're right. You can like you could compress it and not actually involve this. Um, I would love to see you compress it. Argument. Yeah. So I just need to prove that given the same amount remaining, you could transition to any coin. Uh, yeah, the history of the coins doesn't actually matter. Mm. So, let's see. So if we were to like start from the bottom, I feel like starting bottom up might be helpful here. Okay. So if you, given some amount remaining, you, uh, like amount remaining starting with like zero, then the answer you'd return is zero. Um, zero meaning you don't need any coins for this amount. Okay. Then you would move up by the smallest coin value. Um, right now I'm going off of my example, but then this would return one. Mm -hmm. uh, I could move, I could just check every possible, like, are these all integers? Yeah, they are, right? So, it's like, I could go up. Uh, increment all over all integers up to the total amount, and then these would be filled. You know, I could compute these um, one by one. What would your base cases be um, in this bottom-up approach? Well, so starting from like zero is a base case. Right. Every every individual coin value is a base case, which would return okay. one. Awesome. Um, yeah, and then all of these like in between ones, you'd basically like refer back up. Um, I think mm -hmm. uh, the more interesting one is like, yeah, when you reach a coin here, this one, uh, yeah, you can just cheat and return one because you know it's already a coin. Right. I'm just seeing if there's like any. Yeah, <clears throat> I, if that it would this would be computed as like the min of you know whether it's a coin or not, and then. It the also min. why the min? Yeah. It, oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Whether it's a coin or not, or yeah, it, or you it probably would go, just assume if it if it's a coin that you're given, right? Yeah, you could just what's the hard code that base case? Right. Yeah, right. Um, and then yeah, and then for six, you would take uh, you would like check it against the coin like possible coins so like the largest coin that we could subtract from this yeah like these distant these like um i'm gonna be referring to lower sub problems right given any sub problem like this one like n mm -hmm. i'll be you know building my solution from sub problems below n the Distance that I go down from n depends on the coin values available to me. Which so that's coin, valuables, coin values are available to you in this case? In this case, just five and one. So right. it would be all, um, so coin values larger than this current number aren't usable. Um, yeah. <laughs> awesome. So yeah. So that, so therefore, I would basically be checking, like my um, yeah, I would need to check the number of coins smaller than me mm -hmm. um that complexity is 
in order of like the number of coins available. So um, unfortunately, this isn't a constant time operation to compute the subproblem here. Unless I'm missing something, maybe there's a way. Um, yeah, like given just an arbitrary amount n, mm -hmm. my options are basically coin, I'm gonna just write one here. This just means like coin one, it doesn't actually mean the value is one, that coin, coin two, coin three, dot, 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 coin k. Oh, sorry, I reversed the, the nomenclature here. Um, but you only need to check the coins that are smaller than you. Smaller than or equal to you. Right. Um, yeah, I, I'm trying to come like. So which which sub problems would for let's say six? Yeah. How would you compute the value for six? Uh, so for six, I would yeah. uh, I would already have. Um, I would already have in my coins list, mm -hmm. I would already have like an index of where I am, I think, because if I'm starting bottom up, then I'd start from the left, then I move my, and my pointer to the right. Mm -hmm. So, let, uh, when I'm at, when my, uh, amount value is six, I would check to see if my current coin is larger or smaller than me. If it is, uh, larger that, well. Actually, it would always be smaller unless I'm pushing it to the right. So I would guess I would just check the next one, I guess. And then the next one is larger, so I know I don't need to move my pointer. So I would just uh, remain on this coin. And then for every coin to the left, which would be five and one, I would check the subproblems for n my six minus five and six minus one. Awesome. I yeah. think you're. I think you're in a good place to start coding. Okay. Um, how are you feeling about this? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think that that works. Um, should I erase this or should I- You like, can just go to, to the far right, right if you want to. Okay, let's try that. So I can send you the whole whiteboard afterwards. Okay, so yeah, my recurrence relation, yeah, is about what I said there. Although it's not like a, it's a dynamic recurrence relation, which is kind of weird. So I would, so yeah, we'll call this, yeah, you know, num coins. And uh, it takes in coins. And then the amount AMT. Mm -hmm. I'm going to uh, have a recursive method. Uh, this one, the BW. What are you doing bottom up? Oh Are yeah. Are you planning right. to do bottom up or DP? Either way is is fine. Just yeah, I'll you know, I'll do um I'll do top. Yeah, yeah. So top down is less efficient because I don't have that like index on the coins. I would need to. That that let's not even worry about that. Yeah. Okay. So then I'm thinking why, like but, how but how still, it out out of curiosity though, um, top down versus bottom up. Why would top down be less efficient? The uh, I just need to think of like how I would uh, compute all the coins smaller than my current number. So I'd need to have some sort of efficient way to do that. There probably is. So like if I give it a second to think, it would be, you know, I'd, I'd sort it once. Then uh, it'd be like a log n search, um, binary search to the index. That's probably the quickest way. Yeah. So it'd probably be like, yeah, it'd be log, you know, n where n is the number of coins. That would get me the index in the coin list. Then I can iterate down to produce my recursive cases. And then I would take the minimum of those solutions. Let's let's see it. Okay. So for coins, we would just sort it. This is do you want a lot specific language or do you mind like kind of pseudo -cody? Um pseudo is okay. All right. So like, let's assume I just sort these coins in place. Mm -hmm. uh, now uh, I'm gonna do a binary search. So it's gonna be like index equals, do you want me to implement the binary search? No, you don't have to. Okay. Let's start with the pseudo code and then we'll move on from there. Okay. So 
I'm going to grab, grab the index of, uh, oh, sorry. Let's... So I'm going to binary search on these coins with my amount. And on this index, I'm going to assume it gives me the uh, index of this value or to the left. Like, okay, yeah, that's what it would be. So now with this index, I would iterate. Uh, let's see, I probably want to collect all of the answers. So So I'm going to, I'm going to accumulate a list of answers and then I'm going to produce these answers by iterating for, uh, I in, uh, coins index zero to IDX. So this, this is going to iterate over the coins that are relevant to us, which is all the ones with lower values, lower equal okay. values. For each of those, um, we're gonna get the subproblem. So I'm gonna do answers dot append. Num coins. Uh, this let's say this takes in coins. And then it's going to take in the amount, which is going to be uh, amount minus coins i. Oh, shoot. Um, that's just indexing on i. Is that okay? Yeah, that's that's okay. Is that like legible? Uh, it's it's not eligible, but I, I know what you're trying to say. Okay, um, it's keep going. amount minus coins i. Yep, that's uh, what I'm passing in, gotcha. and then uh, that would so this would give me back the minimum number of coins it takes to uh, produce this value here, amount mm -hmm. minus coins i, and then we'll append this answer to our answers array, mm -hmm. and then at the end here we're going to return min whoopsies of answers um i'm you know i'm forgetting the base cases here so i'm gonna like slot those in if that's cool with you yeah please you can yeah. you can draw arrows and stuff that's fine yeah i'll do the base case in green i guess so um if amount equals zero uh, return zero like we discussed on the left over there uh, I think our other base case was about uh, if our value is a coin um, I'm trying to think yeah it's probably most efficient to yeah it's going to be most efficient if we can uh, shortcut that so if amount in coins then return one um there's even more efficient ones i think but no, yeah i think i'll just start i would just do that so talk to me about one thing specific actually keep going keep going oh. um, unless you're good um about coins this one's actually so I'll like slot that in there. here. Yeah, yeah. So for answers that append, let's talk about that line specifically. Okay. Because I want to make sure um, I understand what's going on at the end there. So you're appending exactly what to an the answers array. It says min coins, coins, um, amount minus coins. You see? Sorry, uh, this one is num coins. Let me. Num coins. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. 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 So num coins and, is our recursive function. And just read to me the last part at the end there again one more time. Amount minus. Amount minus uh, coins uh, i. I should specify what i is here, since it depends on the language. But 
I'm just going to assume I is the index. Is that okay? It's okay. So, yeah. So this is this is actually just um, like range. So that, that's that's it's, interesting. So what? Let's let's go through an example here. Um, for three. Well, let's even say two. What would answers be populated by? Okay. So for so we're given two amount and is you're two. given yeah one five and ten right. Okay. So the same one as before. Okay. Mm -hmm. So for two, um, we'd sort the coins. They're already sorted. Let's say they're sorted. Binary search uh, on one five ten with two. That would give us index uh, zero. So I'm going to mark this as zero. Following so far. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now with index zero, um, zero to zero, this would only contain one number. So I would be mm -hmm. zero. Uh, and then here coins zero would be one. Right. So we would be recalling uh, for the value of one. So it'd be mm -hmm. one minus one, sorry, two minus one. So now we would recurse on one. Right. And uh, on one binary search on the coins, it's same thing would return zero because one is doesn't even make it there, right? You have your base case. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> yes, you're right. Um, for amount in coins. So awesome. So how does that bubble up and what does that look like? So now this uh, sub problem where we passed in one would return mm -hmm. one. Um, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry, I forgot that one go. part. Um, we're going to assume that what coin are we using? OK, yeah, we're using one coin to move into this sub problem. So uh, for each of these uh, answers, I would add one to it. So this would be one plus, and then the rest of that expression. Yeah, good catch. Thank you. Awesome. Um, so we're pretty much at time. You have three minutes left. You can spend them how you want. OK, um, so I would just like to mention memoization, most likely here. So like this, oh, unless you meant like spend it uh, did you mean on the problem or did you mean on the problem? Yeah, on the problem. On the problem yeah. So uh, let's see, what would I do if I had more time? So right now, this runtime, um, it's going to hit uh, all the sub problems down to zero, basically, from amount down to zero, mm -hmm. like I said over there. And so I don't think that's super efficient. Um, let me see. Well, one, I think one thing is that I'd want to memoize this one as it is, like this recursive solution. What would you base gonna, that memoization off of? Uh, um, amount. Cool. Yeah, Great. I would memoize that. Then that would give us a runtime of what I said earlier, where you go through every integer. It's just the value amount. That so would what be would the, the so the runtime would be the value amount? Uh, what would it be exactly? Yeah, it would be O of amount. Okay. Um, yeah. Assuming I memoize. Yeah. Uh, actually, hold up. This, sorry, I forgot about this part here. Um, we have a for loop in, in this. Um, yeah, so this runs this runtime here. Yeah. Um, worst case could be the entire list of coins if, you know, a lot of, yeah. So it would, if we mark this as k, then actually it would be uh, amount k, amount times k. Yeah, we hit each nice. subproblem once. Each of the subproblems took potentially k time to produce. So, yeah. All right. Great. All right. Awesome. Um, and we can call it there. All right. So, um, thank you very much, JC, for being a part of this. I uh, really appreciate it. And thank you guys. We'll see you next time. Thank you.